We're going to start in 1946, right after the end of World War II. The ENIAC, spelled E-N-I-A-C, was the world's first computer. It took up an entire room and had to be operated by a large group of people. And it was also only capable of performing relatively simple math, stuff that we can today do with a calculator. I'm going to skip ahead a few decades, as a lot of progress was made in the business world, but the personal computing industry was pretty much non-existent. In 1977, Apple introduced the Apple II. It was both a home and business computer that gave Apple the capital they needed to build their company and become the tech giant they are today. The Apple II was one of the most popular computers of its time, being manufactured for 14 years, selling over 6 million units. A couple years later, a lot of progress had occurred. There were advancements in microprocessors and just the general performance of computers, as well as the rising demand for high-power, low-cost computers. That was when IBM, also known as International Business Machines, introduced the IBM Personal Computer. It was really the world's first home computer for the mass market and not just businesses. It still used a command line interface that would be present for years to come. Users were used to the command line interface at this time, and they didn't know what they were missing without a GUI just yet. 1982 saw the release of what might be one of the most popular computers ever made. It was the Commodore 64. It was a relatively inexpensive home computer that allowed millions of people to get into personal computing. With an easy to use command line interface, a massive library of programs and games, the Commodore 64 was superior in every way to earlier computers, including the Apple II and IBM PC. It sold two million units a year and at one point it was estimated that 30 to 40 percent of all home computers were Commodore 64s. Just two years later, Steve Jobs and Apple introduced the Macintosh. It was an absolute commercial failure, a true flop. However, it introduced Mac OS. It was the first graphical user interface operating system that was originally developed by the Lisa team at Apple. Now this has so many features that we see in today's modern operating systems that were created in 1984. The following year, Bill Gates and Microsoft then released the wildly popular Windows 1.0, which was a graphical shell for Microsoft DOS. So it still had the issues that MS-DOS had, however it built upon it with more usability features. In the late 1980s, laptops and portable desktops were all the rage, and every company was trying to make one. However, they were heavy, not that portable, and generally slower than their regular desktop counterparts. A few years later, in the early 1990s, the World Wide Web was established with a series of protocols that could standardize it. This allowed you to send email, faxes, and communications between people across the world in just seconds. It was truly revolutionary and it's probably one of the most important things in today's society. In 1995, Microsoft released Windows 95, a visually and functionally similar predecessor to the modern Windows operating systems. This introduced the start menu and other features we know and love today. Another big event occurred in 1995. That was the general standardization of computer components. Up until this point, there were dozens of form factors of motherboard, power supplies, and other system components. Then, Intel released the standards that would allow for the unification of the PC platform, and made it simpler for users to upgrade their hardware or replace it when it was broken. Just one year later, Google, the world's most popular search engine, was created. A fun fact for you is that it was supposed to be spelled G-O-O-G-O-L, named after the mathematical um, term for a number with a hundred zeros after it. Come 1998, Apple without Steve Jobs was on the verge of bankruptcy, thanks to the Newton. It was a PDA that was, like the Macintosh, 
an absolute flop. It was way ahead of its time and didn't have features that anyone really cared about while costing an obscene amount of money. Apple needed to do something, and so they bought Steve Jobs' new company, Next, and brought him on board. When he returned, he had to call Bill Gates of Microsoft and borrow $150 million to keep Apple afloat. This kept them alive for a little bit longer until they released the iMac, the translucent blue beauty. This is what made Apple relevant again, and it certainly saved their bacon. The early 2000s saw many changes in both software and hardware, and in 2001, Apple released Mac OS X, its current operating system that has had 13 major updates since 2001. This OS was built on the Unix platform, and therefore it was more secure than Windows and was generally less prone to viruses. This gave Apple a huge step up in selling to schools and businesses as people were concerned about getting viruses. A few years later, AMD, also known as Advanced Micro Devices, released the Athlon 64 CPU. It was a dual-core CPU featuring the first 64-bit architecture that they later licensed to Intel when they developed the Core 2 Duo and Core 2 Quad CPUs. The 64-bit architecture allowed for massive improvements in sheer computational power by giving the CPU a wider bus to communicate with other components. This was the most important improvement in computer hardware for a while. Since then, there have been many rapid advancements in microprocessors that allow for all of today's modern technology. From smaller, more efficient processors with billions of transistors, to faster graphic processors capable of powering multiple high-resolution displays while playing AAA video games. Larger hard drives supporting up to 10 terabytes of storage in a single enclosure. We've also rapidly blown through the capabilities of silicon and are now looking towards developing new technologies to create faster, smaller, and more efficient microprocessors for the future. And the future is bright. And technology, well, that's the candle that makes it so.